Welcome back to another week of Hello Ladies, Feminism and Pro Wrestling. I'm one of your hosts, Sabrina Hannon. I am Megan Manley. And uh, yeah, there's, I feel like there's a lot to talk about in wrestling right now. I don't know when there's not a lot to talk about wrestling anymore, but yeah, it's been kind of insane for like what a couple months it feels like years yes yeah it does um but yes so first up our fun little segment of weird random wrestling paraphernalia laying around i have a Ooh. non-sponsored bootios <laughs> yes and um i got this at comic-con and i have to say Thank you, Scarlett. Get your butt out of my face. Um, and I have to say, before I found Bootios, I too was booty. But thanks to Bootios, I'm no longer booty. <laughs> There's a lovely little unicorn on the back. I think you can like cut this out and stuff, but Lord knows. Oh, I don't want to know what I ate. They're basically like Lucky Charms. Mm-hmm. But I, I think my favorite thing is on the side here. Um, you can't really see it because of the lighting, but um, it has how to dance like Biggie. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very, very clearly him, but it's like the gyrating and the hand Perfect. behind the head. Yeah. Just dance. have sex with the air. That's how you yeah. I mean, I don't think it necessarily says that, no, but it does say raise your left arm while turning your head in opposite direction hold to make a five count then alternate and then step number four is never stop gyrating <laughs> beautiful beautiful yes yes that came with um a t-shirt that is somewhere i know it wasn't the t-shirt that i had wanted they were all out of that one by then oh. yeah yeah i've seen them at fye on um, the bootios i've seen that they sell them there yeah yeah i, I mean tempted, but i never got them they're not bad they're just like um lucky charms that's exactly what it is but you know with the new day (laughs) and they make sure you ain't booty (laughs) i'm surprised they didn't sell um and maybe they did and i just didn't catch it but uh new day pancakes oh yeah i don't think they did i probably would have bought a new day um pancake mix I, I can see you doing that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, I know that's shocking about me. Oh. I did find out this week that Brock Lesnar has a steak spice mix. That he sent me that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that because I watched that interview with uh, Pat McAfee, which is really good. Um, he Pat McAfee does a great job with him, and I learned that. Mm, Brock Lesnar has grain on his farm. That's what he does. But he also raises some animals and butchers them and his butcher shop, which he has made. Um, Which, you know, really fits who he is as a person. He lives his gimmick. The gimmick is him. Yeah, I guess. That's true. My cousin had a farm. Oh, has a farm. I remember him telling me about, like, he would tell his daughters not to get attached to some of the animals. He'd be like, don't name them because we're going to be eating them. And that would horrify me when I hear those stories. Like, I understand that, yeah, you know, meat's got to come from somewhere, but I don't like to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Yeah. In theory, at least Brock Lesnar's livestock is living a nice life prior to their slaughter. I mean, I guess it's better than being in one of those mass, like, factory awful. Farms. Yeah. Yeah this cat yeah she has just been so needy today i turned on her heated bed and she does not care she's just like no no want to be with you yeah she is like in there yeah yeah oh yeah she's been very snuggly the past couple of days confused Aww. by the weather i assume yeah probably putting you onto the floor now there you go go to your yeah, bed i kind of think of it might have been pretty much up my ass too especially lily like she's been just more my shadow than normal she follows me everywhere it's the cutest thing like every time i get up to go anywhere like just to get a drink in the kitchen or if i run up to go to the bathroom like oh where we going mom (laughs) Mm -hmm. right behind me all the time yeah my little shadow 
<laughs> Some nice ASMR there with cat <laughs> breathing noises. <laughs> oh my God. So funny. Like I can't put her outside the room because she'll just cry. I can't even put her onto my <laughs> Scarlett, this is this is a lot. I'm gonna get a restraining order. Please stop. <laughs> All right. So there we go. <laughs> Hope everyone who is watching enjoys my lovely stardust shirt, which looks so creepy looking over the cat. <laughs> <laughs> that does look disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so um I know. Megan did not watch the uh, Elimination Chamber in Saudi Arabia this year. No. But Megan, I did. Megan and her husband don't watch those shows. We, um, we make a point not to watch those and give those shows ratings. Yeah. This was the first one that I watched because one, I love Elimination Chamber um, matches usually. But yeah, so the women's chamber match was pretty good. Um, You know, it, while Alexa Bliss did come out to like her spooky music, they changed it a bit, like her, like the, the video for her entrance. And she wasn't doing anything particularly spooky. Like there was no magic or anything else that happened. She was, you know. I think she wasn't allowed to, from what I understood, that they couldn't do like. Oh, yeah like a woman in magic so that's why I didn't watch it but I saw that there was like no lily no no spooky like weird things happening I heard that that was just something that couldn't happen there so I'm sure it'll be back once they're back in the states I do have to say I thought it was so funny and like uh listening to cultaholic they had the same take as I did that um the women so they had to be you know pretty covered the outfits that they wear, they were wearing, I feel, were far more revealing than their usual ones because, like, that material material was like straight up their cracks. <laughs> like, I was surprised they didn't have because you know, like prior women's matches, they had like a bodysuit on like that, but they had to wear like a large oversized t shirt. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if because of the match itself, like the chamber match, if that would have been dangerous to have loose clothing in that match. I don't think so because like also so when they first started going there um I don't think women over a certain age were even allowed into the arena there were women there throughout the arena Mm -hmm. um and the they were more they were everyone was dressed more western like you didn't have like the traditional Saudi um outfits and coverings anywhere within there so I think Saudi Arabia is certainly making positive changes for women and men um, just based on like, because I have seen matches from the Saudi shows over the years um, and there's definitely more women there and people are dressed very differently. And thankfully they're not getting bottles of water thrown at them as they're coming out like natty did yes yes exactly um then um bria ripley also looked like a full-on dominatrix (laughs) i've seen the outfit yeah um my one friend m who's into wrestling but isn't into all the like extra bullshit that we listen to or like all the backstage stuff like she just turns in tunes in and watches and sometimes I wish that's what I did, <laughs> especially after like she thought the um, elimination chamber show was great overall. Her only complaint was about like the men's match um, and both Goldbergs because um, he said like that was a bit boring and was or she said that was a bit boring and short. Um, and then I thought it was short. I mean, you see what happens in longer matches. He almost kills yeah. himself and his opponent. Yeah. And then um, the men's elimination match, uh, she said, like, was very short once Brock Lesnar was introduced. But my problem with that match was, so we now know that Bobby Lashley has a shoulder injury. Um, I wish 
when they were taking him out of the chamber and out of the cage, they didn't have all the guys in that one corner. If he had been off camera while well, that happened, because it was like, it was too much. It was just too much. It was pulling focus. And those guys were doing like, it was AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, um, Austin Theory and Riddle. They were doing some great stuff um, while that was happening. Not that you could pay attention to it. Um, that was my biggest complaint. The F5 of Austin Theory, like, WWE often has, and rightfully so, like the criticism that younger talent doesn't get, like um, the stage. And here we saw Austin Theory being the only one that kind of lasted with Brock Lesnar, and he took that insane F five off of the top of that uh, that pod. Yeah, that was oh, like I held my breath watching that. I was like, oh, um. Yeah, from what I've seen people saying is that Austin Theory looked like a star during that match, that he looked just phenomenal, that it was a good, that even though he didn't win it, he didn't come off looking like a loser is yeah. pretty much the the gist I got from what I was reading. Yeah, and a lot of people also really liked um, like what Riddle was doing in the match, which I mean, out of everyone that was in there, the two that should have been protected were Riddle and um austin theory because they're the newest Mm -hmm. um and yeah plus riddle has the tag team title match thing coming up so i mean you can't really make him look like too much of a goof when he's got a title match coming up like yeah exactly in theory Um, i mean it is wwe i mean he his whole he did a whole like thing to randy which was great um and then bro i'm not even gonna lie i just i love rk bro it's great (laughs) the lita and um oh i almost said trish wow (laughs) lita and becky match was (laughs) yeah um was i wasn't sure what to expect like i wanted it to be great and it started off like a wee bit slow but by the end like i was starting to edge towards like the edge of my seat like I was very engaged with it. Um, there was a moment where I was even like, are they really going to give this to Lita? Huh. Um, and then after Becky left the ring, because obviously Becky won and they played her music out, they played Lita's music and she was just crying. And it was, it was a lovely moment. Um, and she went and took photos with fans, which was lovely or like shook hands rather, I should say. Brock Lesnar's the one that took photos with people afterwards. So I'm assuming that this is probably like the equivalent of when Charlotte and Trish had their match, that this is probably going to be Lita's last match then. Like Becky's probably retiring her like Charlotte retired Trish. I mean, Lita, that's what I would assume, except for the fact that Lita said that wasn't going to be the case. Now, is she going to just like trot out around the big stuff maybe? You know, I wouldn't have a problem if her last match was at WrestleMania. Like, I would be completely fine with that. Yeah. And I love that Lita's such a fangirl of um, Rhea Ripley. Is she? Yes. Because, I mean, honestly, who the hell isn't? <laughs> yeah, Rhea Ripley's awesome. Yeah. There was a, a moment in the women's match where she had her and Bianca Belair started, like, facing off against one another and then they put uh Liv Morgan and Nikki ASH into uh what the hell is it called when they standing suplex like they're getting ready to suplex them basically where they're just holding them straight up in the air Mm -hmm. um and like brought them down to it was beautiful I think that Rhea and Bianca are going to have one of those career like careers where they're right next to each other throughout it uh kind of like a rivalry like Lita and Trish both like love Roman type thing yes but I well no I would say actually Seth and Roman are both better when they're kind of heels right whereas these whereas Rhea and Bianca I feel are both better when they're faces I mean Seth isn't terrible as a baby face I, I mean his I last face one yeah, I like what he is right now. Like mm-hmm. he just, 
a tweener is probably a good way to describe it because he's not exactly like insulting the fans, but he does stuff in the ring that's kind of heelish. So <laughs> and he's getting cheered, you know what I mean? And like, yeah. Oh, he just a side note. Oh, what was a raw on Monday with like the whole crowd like singing his song and like him dance? Oh my god, I oh, yeah. loved every second of it. But you can go back to the Saudi thing. I'm sorry. Oh no. Um, the only other thing I was gonna say is that uh, Ronda Rousey did a one winged angel, one winged angel. Like that is because I I saw her do it and I was like that looks really familiar, huh? Well, I wonder where I've seen that from because she's wearing a gi. Um. My guess is she didn't feel comfortable wearing the skin tight outfits that everybody else was. Like, so she put the gi on over, which played really well for her character. Well, she wore that to the Olympics, I saw it too. So I don't know if she wore it for like any kind of significant reason. Oh, yeah, with the Olympics <laughs> going on. But yeah, uh, that Sonia Deville and Nate, or not Sonia, um, Naomi specifically did like was the outstanding in that match specifically I was so glad to see that like all the positive reaction to Naomi and like yes. everybody saying that she was 100% the star of that match mm-hmm. I just I was so happy to see that because I love her and I feel like we need to see her in more main event pictures again like back when she was you know champ and she's just so good and I feel like often overlooked and like we said I think it is a direct result from the trouble that her husband gets in and she's the one that gets punished. Yeah. I didn't realize. So I um, had tuned into NXT because I wanted to see the Ziggler and Champa match. Good marketing on WWE's part because I probably wouldn't have uh, mm-hmm. otherwise. But um, I saw, I, I, as I was fast forwarding through, I stopped because someone who looked so strikingly like the Usos was there. Sure enough, it's their little brother. I was just like, you could have been a triplet. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw that he's getting into wrestling. Yeah, I mean, he's on NXT. I didn't, I didn't, he might have wrestled. I don't know if he did. I fast forward through, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. I stopped, I watched it to Pete Dunn's thing. There was a moment with uh, Indy Hart- Hartwell and Dakota Kai and interviews and kept on going. I still find it really fun. Like I knew that the second that Shampo won that tag match on Raw, I'm like, well, that definitely means he's going to be losing on NXT because if there's one thing WWE loves, it's their 50-50 booking. There can never be just like someone who wins. It's always got to be like a win, then a loss, then a win, then a oh my. and then the feud goes on for 900 years. And like, there's yeah. never really a good proper blow off match. And if you think there's a proper blow off match. They still feud for three months after the fact when it should have ended. And just, oh my God. I mean, it makes sense that he loses because he's probably going up to the main roster. It seems like he's raw now. Yeah. I just feel like the match the night before was pointless. Like why even have that then? I I think for, um, to get Finn Balor back, like in the conversation, even though I'm very excited to see Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. Like I'm here for that. Yeah, that should be really good. Yeah. Um, I think Balor's going to win. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think uh, Damian Priest is going to be pushed higher up the card, honestly. Mm. Um, and I like Damian Priest. I kind of liked what he was doing before the like Hulk angry smash thing, but. Um, I was shocked that they were booing him. Like, that really surprised me because he's been pretty over. It, it must just be because it's Balor. Like people yeah. love Balor so much that I think they would boo almost anybody that was going to be versing him. Yeah, I would probably probably boo Damian Priest for Finn Balor. Yeah, I would cheer everybody. I just hope everyone has fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you go get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, but the they kept. So Champa didn't lose, like, he, I mean, he lost, but it was because Bobby Roode was just um, dressed as a cameraman and hit him with the camera, which, I mean, <laughs> interference happens in wrestling. I wasn't upset by it. I completely for, 
this is so bad. I completely forgot about Bobby Roode because I was just like, who would be interfering in this? <laughs> like, oh yes, yes. So Bobby Roode. Yep. But Dolph Ziggler will now be challenging for the NXT championship. I don't think he's gonna win it. Yeah. Braun Breaker, think- like while he's not bad at promos he might want to consider doing the thing that Bret, Bret Hart did with wearing sunglasses because like his eyes sometimes give away that he is scared shitless. Mm-hmm. That's the Steiner kid, right? That's Braun yeah. Breaker. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you love watching the new NXT. That is your favorite. Yeah. It's just that's the best. <laughs> you say it's very good, very evil. <laughs> I, you know what, it'd be way too much because, like, I'm at the point where I can barely remember what happened on Raw. Like, you know, that just it's like wrestling overload. Because I, I mean, since we've last done the last podcast, Rampage has happened, the Elimination Chambers happened, Raw has happened, Dynamite has happened. And, Smackdown. Well, that'll be tomorrow. Oh yeah, sma- the other Smackdown from yeah. oh my god, yeah. There's just like I can't add in NXT too, or I'm just gonna start forgetting my name. <laughs> yeah, and like I will fast. F- so I don't. I look for when they put up AEW darks. I will take and look at because they put in who's going to be there. And if there's nobody that I care to see, I just skip it entirely. Otherwise, I, I fast have not. It. I haven't watched a, a dark since maybe like the first two weeks that they started doing dark. I just I don't like I you know how much I love AEW. I just don't have any interest in watching dark unless they have like Orange Cassidy or one of the best friends because they had them on there a lot for a while. Which is why I started watching them and Wardlow. Um, War Daddy. Yeah, War Daddy. They'll also have uh, like Ruby uh, Soho <laughs> as well. Uh, and I, I do do love her and Thunder Rosa. So <clears throat> there's, and right before they left, Brandy <laughs> was on wrestling. So, you know, it seems like most of the women's stuff happens on dark which means i should probably watch it considering that we do a wrestling slash feminism podcast but again like it's just so much content that i don't think my brain wants it Mm -hmm. and for the most part it's just their exhibition like if there's someone who is any good with like within the women's division it's an exhibition match because they're going up again they're squashing somebody yeah um or it's two people that we have no idea who the hell they are. Um, so there's that. Yeah. Like, I, even thinking back to last Friday, the only thing that I can remember from Rampage at this point is the Trent and Jay White match. I know Adam Cole started, and I don't remember who it was. Was it 10? I think it was 10 from the Dark mm-hmm. Order. Yeah. Okay. So I, that I vaguely remember. Yeah, because I, I, think- I had messaged you about how, like, I, that I didn't realize how wide Ten's back was. Like, he's just, like, built. I feel like he's gotten bigger. Like, I don't remember him always being that, like, holy shit, he's huge. I, I, I feel like he's bulked up or I'm just not remembering correctly. Mm-hmm. But he just, I don't know, the past couple of weeks when I've seen him, I'm, I, I have to take a double take. I'm like, did he always look that big? I, I'll have to go back and like look up like old BTs or something to see if I'm going crazy or if he really is bigger. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe it's just like who, who he's like uh, next to because Adam Cole has like a smaller like frame, like a body frame. Whereas it looks like tens is just, if, if you put him next to who, Taz I feel like Taz has like a wider back as well well, unlike that even when he comes out with all the dark order like he always did like when I see him Mm come out of the tunnel I I I was like oh my god okay I think he's bigger I I have to look I don't Mm -hmm. know maybe I just never noticed how big he was before or he has bulked a little bit 
Yeah, it's possible. I always am so shocked by how small Hook's frame is. Like if you look at how close his shoulders are together, like his mm-hmm. like from clavicle to clavicle or whatever, shoulder blade to shoulder blade, he's not very wide. Yeah, not and like I, his dad. No. Uh, that always catches me off guard every time I see the the still before a fight. Um, but it always I'm just like, oh yes, that's right. <laughs> did you watch BT this week? I did. did you, how about Hook being the the lawyer for the the Dark Order? You know, like it was just offer the judge chips. <laughs> oh yeah, some Doritos. I feel like they're going to be trying to get him on to BTE more because people really want him on. I wonder when he's going to speak for the first time. We haven't heard a word out of that kid since he came out. Yeah. I don't even know what he sounds like. (laughs) Imagine if he has like a Mickey Mouse voice. (laughs) Like the same thing. (laughs) That's why. (laughs) Yeah, I I legit was just thinking it'd be really funny if he's like, we represent. (laughs) I don't know what'll be weirder if he sounds like that or if he sounds exactly like Taz. That'd be strange too. Because that voice doesn't sound like it would be coming out of him either or look like. No, no. (laughs) I'm just very curious to hear like what his first promo is going to be and who it's going. It's going to have to be like a major feud to get him to actually speak. Yeah. Speaking of promos. Oof. (laughs) MJF. And that promo he cut like... And it's one of those things where as you're listening to it, you know, there are bits of truth sprinkled into it. It's just a matter of how much of it is true. Um, like we we were talking, Megan and I uh, were talking <laughs> last night, I think it was. Yeah, right? it was yeah. during the show. About how specifically I think the incident with uh, quarters being thrown at him and him being told to pick them up that seemed too specific to yeah. be something made up yeah um and while it might not have happened when he said it happened or like, I, I completely believe the the football thing but um it might not have lined up perfectly with punk like i i think he probably adjusted his timelines to make them fit. Mm-hmm. But man, the only criticism I have is MJF always uses his outside voice. <laughs> you know, when he's giving promos, like he really yells into the microphone. And I think he could have, if on some of those parts, if he had like dialed back his voice, not too much, but just a little bit, it would have like really stabbed the knife into everyone's hearts just a little bit more. Um, but I mean, it was fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. I think that was the best promo that we have seen out of him in AEW so far. And he's had some bangers to begin with. Mm-hmm. It was just I, like after I got done watching it, uh, Brian and I looked at each other and I just went, wow, like that was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even as you're watching it, MJF is a heel. We all clearly know that he's a heel. I know at some point that it's going to be like, I was lying. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to be like, I was lying, like possibly, or I like use this somehow in some advantage. Every villain has an origin story. So that's also very true. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't think that it's going to end up being that he was as sincere, like as he, you know, like some, there's going to be some kind of twist and we all are very much aware of that. However, looking on the response to his tweet, when he said something about like, that was all real, like whatever he tweeted after that. And there were a lot of people that have ADHD or have kids that have it yeah. that were saying to him, like, you know, I understand that it was a promo and that you might go back on it, but I really appreciate what you said. And you gave a lot of kids hope, or like, I know that, like I saw another one saying, like, I know you don't break kayfabe, but I want you to know, I'm, I really appreciate like what you said tonight. And it really hit home. And he really 
got like he really got through to a lot of people from that promo Mm -hmm. and I think that that was really important too like there's a lot of kids that probably have a lot in common with what he said that were watching that and thinking like okay well I can grow up to be like this too like I can I can be successful yeah mm -hmm. Uh, he, I feel like he has talked about in some of the interviews before that I've heard about him having ADHD. Like there's a couple floating out there. If you really go down the YouTube rabbit hole, you will find them of him out of character it's before he ever got to AEW. And, uh, he's, he he's he's a really good interview i actually like his interviews more when they're shoot interviews because when he's in character you're like there's just certain answers that you're going to get for certain things no matter how many times he's asked mm-hmm. um but yeah it was just it, it it was an amazing promo and then the cherry on top of course is cm punk coming out and saying is it true and that one single tear sliding down that had already slid down his face and he says like yes and leaves i love that they did that not on the microphone yeah that they made it seem like more of a real moment oh hang on yeah oh Oh, i'm so sorry i had to sneeze (laughs) may john cena bless you thank you (laughs) Yabadoo. Yabadoo. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. It's the, the change in the weather, my allergies are just out of control. It's all the cocaine you do, don't lie. <laughs> yeah, that's very <laughs> true. <laughs> all the coke. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm just kidding for any like just audio only. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's no, there's no coke. I, I have always been too afraid to do any hard drugs. So. I mean, it's a pretty good fear to have, especially if you're someone who has like an addictive personality. I just always thought that, see, this is where my anxiety like comes into my benefit Mm -hmm. is I always figured that I would be like one of those rare cases of like my heart exploding the first time I do (laughs) coke. Like when you hear that felt like that happening to people. So I was always like, no, I'm good. I'll just, I'll I'll smoke pot now. And then like with you guys, that's fine. That ain't going to kill me, but you can keep your coke. (laughs) My favorite cocaine fact that I know <laughs> is, <laughs> is they used to use cocaine. They would, so if someone was dying or very ill, doctors would take and put cocaine around like the patient's anus. Or why? <laughs> to help with the pain. And like, I think just like, I don't know why they're, I mean, it absorbs quickly, I guess, but I think doctors were just freaky. <laughs> Well, I mean, doctors' answers for everything for a while was cocaine. Like, put coke yeah. on the baby's teeth and gums. But, like, you know, I mean, I mean, that will stop them from crying. It <laughs> might. Sure, you know. it will. <laughs> they might climb up your wall, but <laughs> <laughs> that's how Spider Man was invented. <laughs> Stanley <laughs> gave his kid some coke and. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> the resulting product was Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> oh god but wrestling <laughs> mjf and cm punk before i sneezed and we talked about coke um, no i what was i saying oh how i liked how they did it like off mic like it made it mm-hmm. feel like more of a real it was just it was good professional wrestling like it just it reminded me of watching wrestling when i was a kid like that kind of stuff like not all flashy sports entertaining like grabbing some from real like some truth from real life and embellishing it a little bit for storyline it was just I'm more invested in this feud now than I was it was just beautifully done absolutely beautifully done and before I forget I did take and watch uh South Paul wrestling South Paul wrestling did you finally watch it yes isn't it great (laughs) Yeah, I think there's four episodes or something on Peacock that you can see, and they're short, but my God. Chad, too uh, bad. <laughs> the, the ending is, is what, when you said about old school wrestling, mm-hmm. because 
old school wrestling was really fucking weird. <laughs> like, Lethal leap year. Yeah. <laughs> There's not even a leap year that year. <laughs> yeah. But it ends with like a clip of, I think it's Piper bringing, I forget who it is out, like that's chained under a sheet and like just this really weird nonsense thing that they did. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Some things are better today. <laughs> Cena, Fandango, Gallows, and Anderson, they are the four MVPs of that whole self-pot wrestling because they are the best. I mean, Breeze did a really good job with that fake mustache on. <laughs> and being the guy who bought the farm. Yeah. Yes, that's the he he was funny too. But the the four of them in particular, though, like especially Fandango. <laughs> he killed me with that obsession with that ex-girlfriend and just like depressed and the drinking yeah. and like he said almost nothing but he did fantastic you know i didn't realize that that was him for the first few minutes the first time i watched it because he just looked so different with like that comb over thing and everything <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't really... and then i was like is that fandango mm-hmm. yeah and i um i really love jericho's interviewing as like <laughs> mean gene or like the brain it was fantastic <laughs> My absolute favorite, though, absolute favorite is Luke Gallows. I mean, he is just, he's the star. He is the star of South Paul Regional Wrestling. I guess how that started was it was something that they just used to do backstage, like, and then they started recording it, and then they released it, and I am so glad that they did, because it's fantastic. There was, uh, I can't even remember what John Cena said. (laughs) it's just he said something and the look on his face i was cackling like it was oh i'm so glad you watched it it was i feel like watching them again yeah i'm gonna make nam watch it i have a southpaw regional wrestling t-shirt somewhere i'm gonna have to break that out and wear it on the podcast yes that is amazing they used to sell them on the wwe shop when those were coming out and i i it was on sale, like during one of their sales, I think it was like $12 and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to definitely buy that. Yeah. That is my favorite thing about WWE shop is that you can just wait for things to go on sale. They mm-hmm. usually do at some point. And then suddenly you have four new shirts for the cost of one and a half. Right. I, I don't really have a lot of WWE merch, to be honest with you. I'm I'm very yeah, full up you. on AEW. Hi. No, not at all. <laughs> you know what I do remember that I have is I have a Okada shirt that I'm going to have to find to wear too. I would imagine. Do you have a lot of uh, New Japan shirts? Um, I have. So I have my Kenny Bullet Club shirt, the, like the 8-bit looking one, um, like the video game one. I have a Hangman um, Bullet Club shirt. And then I have my Rainmaker, uh, my Okada Rainmaker shirt. They're the only like New Japan shirts that I have. Um, I Brian just has a Bullet Club like in general shirt, and he had a Marty Scurll Villain Club that he doesn't wear after you know allegations happened. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> that's like tucked in a drawer somewhere. Um, but other than that, I have AEW stuff. Like I have. I think the first the first elite shirt of Kenny's that came out I had the cat on it when they AEW first became a thing um I have a hoodie I have a Kenny hoodie a dark order hoodie um the CM Punk shirt I ordered um that night where nobody can got, get on to the website to order the shirt I it took me 15 hours and I finally got to order it Actually, I think I ordered it during my pre cana classes for my wedding. We went on on break and I was like still trying to order the shirt. <laughs> um, um, Young Bucks one was yeah. pre-AEW. Do you want to talk about uh, that Kenny Omega photo? Oh, the Rolling Stone one? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know what I can say about that that won't make me look like a creep. <laughs> <laughs> all i know is i stopped dead scrolling when i saw that picture oh hang on let's see if they can pick it up on the 
I still stand by my, he looks like the villain in a teen rom-com from, or not necessarily a teen, but we would have been teens or younger, uh, pre-teens in like, the n- early 2000s. Yeah. That I one. Didn't, I didn't even realize that was him initially. Oh, I, I'm very much a fan of Kenny in a suit, it turns out. <laughs> Because that is going to be a background on my phone. <laughs> it's like, it was my wedding photo, but now. It's actually not. <laughs> the background on my phone is from that webcomic that I read about Persephone and Hades. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The yeah, background of mine remember... is my dog, so. I don't even remember why someone posted that. It was in one of those groups and it was something about him. And I just stopped and saved the picture and immediately sent it to you (laughs) Kenny Omega had shared it recently that's how I it's like um two three days maybe before I want to say on his Facebook that's where it was show uh shared like his public Facebook not his Kenny Omega and I are not like BFFs where where I'm on his real maybe that's that might be where I saw it then. I don't know. I, I know it was one of the groups on Facebook. I, I I don't even pay attention like to what group is what sometimes when I see things. I just either like it, comment, steal a picture, and move on. <laughs> yeah. I had to leave that um AEW one. It was too toxic for me. Oh, did you end up leaving it? Yeah, it was it was too much. Well, yeah, sometimes it gets a little it's still real to me, damn it. Like yeah. Like I, I'm in a Dan Housen fan group one that is just so innocent and pure and I love it. No swearing. No swearing. His parents are in it for crying yeah. out loud. Like it's wonderful. Yeah. Cause Aww. when he made his debut, his, um, his dad put out this post that was just so sweet and yeah. It's great. I love that. Mm-hmm. I just yeah, thought his- that- his dad like I think his dad might be a magician or something based on some photo I don't know though but when you look at his dad it's very clear how he got to be Dan Housen that we know and love I was gonna say that would be a very big piece of his puzzle if his dad was a magician right yeah (laughs) very very large piece of that puzzle and I would absolutely I think like performing is just in his blood. Even his wife is uh, a burlesque dancer Check and it out. he like travels around. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. She, him and Mel- Melissa Joan Hart was backstage at AEW. So you saw everyone getting photos, but him and his wife got a photo with her as well. She was, did they show her on BT? I, I can't remember. Or they were talking about it at least. I know that the name of the the episode was like Matt Jackson explains it all or something like that. Yeah, and they act like they're going to be talking about Cody, but they're talking oh, about their lost so bags. Funny. Like, what the fuck happened to Cody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, but they were really talking about their their stolen luggage. Yes. Oh, and I love the segment with Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and uh, Bobby Fish going into Adam Cole's <laughs> room and the air guitar. Yeah, call and then the flute call, and the call, how to play, call me, call yeah. me. Also, Bobby Fish playing the tambourine and basically just smacking his ass. <laughs> I was dead. It was beautiful. Though I was half expecting Britt to be in the other bed again and being like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I was really waiting for that. I wish they had had done that. <laughs> that is, but yeah. I said after I watched that, that that was the first episode of BTE in a while that I felt like it felt like an episode of BTE. Like it felt like an old school episode because for a while they haven't. And this one just really had that like old school feel about it to me for whatever reason. I don't know. I liked it. It was one of my favorite ones in a while. It was quite entertaining. And I think the Bucks are definitely going face soon. Yeah. Yeah. As against O'Reilly and Fish. Yeah. Yeah. Because especially last night when Hangman came in and they were just both like walked out. They're like, nope. And we don't want to fight you. See you later. 
Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I will, I, I really appreciate how they're handling all of this, especially without Kenny Omega is going, he was hoping to come back in March, but he's saying now he's not going to make it. And the reason being that he can't get into doctor's appointments, which makes so much sense. I bet he's missing Canada a whole lot right now. And he, he would fit. That has to be so painful for him in a way, because he would fit so perfectly into all of this that it's going, the roof's going to come off the place when he comes back. Oh, a hundred percent, which was a guarantee to begin with, but you know, there's also more behind the scenes. There's more in new Japan that's playing into this as well. Cause apparently Jay white has turned on Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, which are part of the bullet club, like OG members of like Finn Balor, like Prince Devitt era, Mm -hmm. like bullet club. And Tony Khan is teasing like this huge thing that's going to happen. And apparently uh, Japan has just like relaxed their restrictions where they're open now for travel Mm -hmm. back and forth. So I think that there's going to be a big ass new Japan like crossover thing happening. I think we might be seeing Okada sooner than you think, like with the whole best friends and Mm -hmm. um, chaos thing. Um, I think we're going to end up seeing like a bullet club civil war, like that between like bullet club and elite. And then like bullet club now, it's just, there's going to, there's going to be a lot of shit. I think that's going down between new Japan and um, AEW. And I'm so excited to see it. That'll be beautiful to see. And then for Kenny to come back, like during like a civil war with the whole, Oh my God, it's just going to be a bushy. Oh, I know. Oh, Golden Lovers. The Golden yeah. Elite. Oh, Kenny and Ibushi and the Young Bucks back together again. I just, I'm so excited. I feel like like this summer coming up for wrestling is going to be really exciting. I think there's going to be a lot of fun stuff that's going to end up happening. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> um, did, did you catch any of Kyle O'Reilly on Renee? Um, Piquette's podcast now oral sessions Mm -hmm. so I know I messaged you this that he is a theater kid (laughs) which I love he played Danny Zuko in Greece Uh, I think he said in his sophomore year of high school (laughs) fantastic (laughs) as a theater kid myself (laughs) I was not the biggest Kyle O'Reilly fan but now I am (laughs) that and listening to him talk about so he just became a father. Um, his daughter Jade was born and she was named after his mother, who he said is like was a staunch feminist, like and that he's so excited. He's always wanted to have a little girl. And like I, I was just like, yes, men talking <laughs> about how much they love their feminist mothers. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Fantastic. So you've done a total 180 on them then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I still don't want them to beat the young bucks, but I now forgive him doing. It also makes me 